If you asked me what the best upgrade is for an airsoft gun, I would give you a slightly biased answer. Because I'm something of an HPA fanboy, and I've owned a lot of HPA engines over the years. And I mean a lot of f***ing HPA engines. But just because I think it's the best upgrade you can buy, that doesn't mean it's right for everyone. And today we're going to talk about whether it's right for you. It literally improves every single function of your gun. You want instant trigger response? HPA. Do you want the highest rate of fire? HPA. Low maintenance? HPA. Adjustable power? HPA. And so on and so forth. But like all good things, they have costs. These ones are the most affordable, but we'll get to that later. An AEG is basically a compressor that compresses just enough air to fire one BB and does it over and over again for every single shot. This is what makes them so dang loud and break so dang often. But with HPA, all that hard work is located off site. Kind of like tech jobs in the US. I wouldn't recommend charging into battle with a compressor. So instead of compressing gas for every BB, you use pre-compressed gas of some kind like HPA or CO2. You can wear a tank like this on your back or belt and use an air hose to connect to your gun, or alternatively you can mount it below the grip like a paintball gun. So one downside to HPA is that you need to buy a whole new tank every single time you run out of air. Kidding. I'm kidding. That's I'm kidding. No, you need to buy one tank and just get it filled. Most fields will fill your tank for free. A lot of scuba shops will do it for a small fee. They make pumps to do it manually, or you can get a compressor that's specialized for PCP. I guess I'm Dr. Seuss now. Anyway, this isn't the kind of PCP that makes you eat your mom's face off. It stands for Precharge Pneumatic, and it is a specialized compressor that goes to a really high PSI so it can fill your tank all the way. You may be thinking to yourself, but we have compressor at home. Unfortunately, home compressors only go to two or 300 PSI tops and your tank is gonna need three to 4,000. You actually can use a home compressor, but you have to have an adapter that allows you to connect the airline directly to the compressor instead of using the compressor to fill your tank and then power your gun. They also make adapters so that your gun can run on CO2, which sounds like a great solution since you don't have to buy a tank, but the adapter itself costs more than a tank a lot of the time. So you're kind of back at square one. Actually, square negative one, because now you have to buy CO2 in perpetuity. So I recommend a standard air tank, either mounted to your gun or worn on your back. Now let's talk about HPA engines. The engine itself is the most expensive and most important part of your build, but depending on if you're fluent in girl math or not, uh, it could save you money. You see, comparing an AEG out of the box to an HPA build is kind of like comparing your grandma's smart car to Kyle's WRX with 20 grand in upgrades. Except the WRX will probably blow an engine way before your HPA engine ever dies. Hmm. Bad comparison. <laughs> Basically, if you want to compare apples to apples, you have to look at an upgraded AEG that gets over 45 rounds per second, has hot swappable springs, and a programmable MOSFET, and even then you still won't get as many features as an HPA build. Plus, if you add up all these parts and compare it to an HPA engine, especially one on sale, <coughs> HPA comes out ahead. If I still haven't scared you away from using HPA yet, uh, let's talk about engine types. Open bolt engines rest with the nozzle in a retracted position. When you pull the trigger, it moves the nozzle forwards to load a BB and then releases some gas to fire it. After that, it retracts the nozzle to load another BB and it repeats through these cycles. Closed bolt, on the other hand, rests with the nozzle in a forward position, and when you pull the trigger, it releases gas to fire the BB. It then retracts the nozzle, loading another BB, and moves the nozzle forwards back to the resting position. The third option is a hybrid system, which is kind of a mix between the two. It rests with the nozzle in a rearward position, when you pull the trigger, it loads a BB, just like an open bolt, except there's a longer delay before the gas is released to fire the BB. This lets it somewhat stabilize before firing the BB, kind of like a closed bolt, um, but at the expense of rate of fire. For example, the Wolverine Inferno has a slower rate of fire than other open bolt engines, like the F1 or the Jack or the Pulsar or the Backdraft Phoenix. An open bolt system typically needs good nozzle alignment in order to get the best performance. A hybrid system allows nozzle alignment to be a little bit more disregarded, and a closed bolt system needs the least care when you're doing an install. Within these mechanisms, there are mechanical and electronic engines. Mechanical engines are controlled by either a button valve or a physical sear. These engines don't require a battery, which is cool, but you don't get full auto, burst, binary, or any other fun fire modes 
which in my opinion is cooler. If you only ever want semi-auto and you don't care about having the option for other fun fire modes, it's a trade-off you might be willing to make. The nice thing about HPA is that the battery is incredibly small, and even a little guy like this can last multiple days. So I don't mind occasionally charging a battery if it gets me all the bells and whistles. And having electronics control your system means that there are less required parts, which keeps costs down, and in the case of backdraft innovations, we pass that savings along to you. Now that you know roughly how these engines work, it's time to pick one. First, we've got to mention the big dogs, Polar Star and Wolverine. These guys have been in the game for over a decade. Polar Star came out with the first HPA engine, and it was a full drop-in conversion kit called the Fusion Engine. They still sell these today, and it replaces the whole gearbox inside your M4. But the majority of the HPA market is people buying drop-in conversion kits, which replace the piston assembly in your gearbox. Polar Star sells the Jack, the F1, the F2, and the Kythera. The F2 is basically a drop-in version of the Fusion Engine, and it has two solenoids, one controlling the nozzle and one controlling the release of gas. This gives a lot of control and tunability, but your wallet's gonna hurt. The F1 and Jack are both single solenoid open bolt engines, and the Kythera is a closed bolt mechanical that only works with semi-auto. Wolverine came out with the SMP, which later became the Hydra, and that allows for offset nozzles for converting things like the M14 or the P90. The SMP is basically discontinued because they came out with the Inferno, which is their hybrid engine. They also make the Reaper, which I think they stopped making as a drop-in kit. I'm pretty sure it's only available for the MTW now. The MTW is a complete HPA rifle, and and it's Wolverine's flagship product. I'm sure they'll always sell drop-in kits, but they seem to be putting a little less emphasis on it now than they used to. There's also Redline with the N7. They make a mechanical and an electronic version, and both are closed bolt. There's also Gate, which is known for their fire control units and MOSFETs. They started selling HPA engines at about the same time as me, and now they have three options, the Pulsar S, a single solenoid open bolt engine, the Pulsar D, a dual solenoid closed bolt engine, and the Pulsar H, which is a single solenoid hybrid engine. They had a lot of issues when they initially came out, and they've been struggling to recover from the bad PR. Unfortunately, it's hard to find someone who recommends the Pulsar line. But I should note that their fire control units are pretty dang cool, and they're programmable via Bluetooth. We are also selling a wireless fire control unit, and it's significantly cheaper than theirs, and is gonna have a lot more features. Right now it's in worldwide beta testing, so if you wanna try it out before it's officially released, you can. There's a newer brand called Mech Labs, and while doing research for this video, I learned that it's actually a mechanical engine that has full auto. Kinda cool. But it's a full drop-in V2 gearbox, so you aren't able to do AK builds or anything like that with it. But hey, I didn't know there were any mechanical options that had full auto, so that's sick. Another small brand is Spark Labs with the Wolf HPA engine. It works as open or closed bolt, and it's more battery hungry because the nozzle moves with the electricity, but it's more air efficient because it doesn't waste any gas. Who am I forgetting? Hmm. Oh! My brand, Backdraft Innovations, is trying to make HPA more widespread and more affordable. The Phoenix is a low-cost open-bolt engine with burst, binary, full-auto, semi-auto, and all the other fun fire modes. I mean, even when it's not on sale, most people recommend the Phoenix over the Jack or the F1, and both of those are close to $400, so that's gotta count for something. But if you don't even give half a sh about how much money you spend, which is crazy work in this economy, then I would recommend the Polar Star F2 if you want the maximum rate of fire, the Spark Labs Wolf if you want maximum air efficiency, or the Wolverine MTW if you want out-of-the-box performance. Or a three-pack of Phoenixes if you want to convert multiple guns to HPA. If it has to be mechanical, I would recommend the Polar Star Kythera for its realistic trigger pull, the N7 Milsim for its durability, and I guess the Nexus engine? I haven't heard much about it, but it has full auto. If you want the best bang bang for your buck, the Kythera is a good value, but you just can't beat the Backdraft Phoenix. On a regular day, the Polar Star Kythera is the most affordable name brand option at $280, and the Phoenix has an MSRP of $250. But it's holiday season, and today is not a regular day. For the rest of the month, we're giving $30 off, which makes the engine only $219, plus free shipping. So now you know the pros and the cons of HPA, what types of mechanisms there are, and you have some good recommendations on what engine to buy. Another trick to save money and spread out your purchases is if you own a gas blowback, you can convert that to HPA as well. They sell HPA adapters for most gas blowback pistols, and they sell HPA taps for pretty much every gas blowback magazine. So if you don't want to spend all the money at once, you can buy an air rig now and use it with your gas blowback pistol or rifle. But if you don't own any airsoft guns yet, and you know you want to use 
HPA right off the bat, I would recommend getting a used gun, considering the fact you're going to take all the parts out of it. Most longtime players have guns laying around that they would probably let go for under 100 bucks. So go to an airsoft field, join a Facebook or a Discord group, and see if someone wants to cut you a deal so you can get into the sport. There's also Evic Boneyard, which is a section of Evic's website where they sell broken guns, returns, and display models that may or may not work. These are prime candidates for HPA overhauls. After you have the gun body, you can buy an HPA engine and an air rig and either install the parts yourself or send them off to a tech service like RPS or Amped Airsoft. They can do the install for you, saving you time and effort. And while I strongly believe that HPA is the best upgrade money can buy, it still isn't for everyone. If you only play once a year, it might not be worth the investment. And if you really don't like winning, you might be disappointed with how much better you are than everyone else after you have an HPA engine. But if you want to be the most competitive that you can, HPA is the only way to go. Thank you to this guy right here who shared the last video and left a comment. You've won a free HPA engine, so reach out to me in the Discord in order to claim your prize. If you want a chance to win an engine from this video, you can do the same. And don't forget that everyone's a winner with discounts like these, so you should probably pick one up before it's too late. I'm ripping off super fast, Matt. To do is impress the algorithm. It used to be that you have to impress people to get people to watch your videos, but now all you have to impress is the algorithm. So do me a favor, leave a comment, and hit the subscribe button. It actually helps the channel a lot. Later.